But right now, we're going to talk about a new kind of uh, bank. Uh, and I'm going to talk with Xavier Latte. Welcome, Hi. Xavier. Hi. Uh, you're the head of performance management yes. at Hello Bank. And before we start talking about your specific uh, uh, responsibilities, uh, can you shortly tell us what is Hello Bank? So yes, uh, Hello Bank is the mobile bank of BNP Paribas Group. Mm -hmm. So um, if you look at the trends, you've got two things. First, you've got the uh, digital world, which is fast evolving. Mm -hmm. uh, most of people are hyper-connected, multi-deviced. Uh, they want information uh, all the time in, in real time. Uh, and on the other side, you've got the uh, fintechs and huge companies such as, um, such as Apple uh, that are grabbing some market shares on the um, banking convenience, such as daily banking, payments, consumer mm -hmm. loans, and so on. So uh, the group BNP Paribas has decided a few years ago to develop its activities and to, to build up a new brand, which is Hello Bank, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, so to build up a new brand in order to face this kind of competition and to develop fast on the digital world what concerns banking. So that's, uh, that's why we, uh, we've developed the, uh, the Hello Bank. So Hello Bank is a kind of small structure set totally aside of the, uh, of the group. Okay. Um, we are autonomous in our way of working, so we work agile, we, we want to go very fast. Uh, we are data-driven uh, structure now, and, um, and it's really needed to, uh, to go fast on, on this kind of banking market. And when have you launched? Uh, the 16th of May, 16 May, sorry, 2013. Okay, that's a very specific answer. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, as a as a consumer, what what does Hello Bank offers me that a normal bank doesn't? Well, fact that um, there are all the mobile banks. If you look at the uh, mobile banking apps, for instance, mm -hmm. most of the banks are available mobile. Uh, but Hello Bank wants to be different than this. Uh, we've built our brand based on a community. We want. Okay. We don't speak about customers, we speak about members. And we, want, we really want to be part of their life. Um, we've built a partnership, for instance, to be part of the holidays. We participate with the holidays. Uh, we've also noticed that uh, our main audience, which is the youngsters, are very keen of electronic music, not the mainstream, but underground electronic music. So we've developed a um, um, digital platform that presents content and, uh, and when you can create your own playlist, on these specific materials. Uh, to give you an ex another example, we want to boost the mobility of the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, we've set up, um, we've deployed Wi-Fi connections, for instance, in the tramways, okay. just to make the bank available everywhere. And why, why did you come up with the idea to focus on a community? Two things. First, uh, being different. Mm -hmm. uh, just having a mobile bank is, uh, is like, yeah, I won't tell names, but okay, everyone knows them. Uh, there are other mobile banks, but yeah. being different and working on, com on a community enhance the uh, engagement of the audience. And we Hello Bank is more than a bank. Uh, we've got other, we've, we develop our activities about around sorry, the uh, Hello Universe, mm -hmm. uh, and we want our members to be part of this universe. Uh, we develop interactions with the, uh, with the housing, we develop interactions with crowdfunding, uh, we develop interactions with music, electronic music, so we want really to be part of them. Okay. What's the purpose? And uh, I, I noticed you have a button saying... Movember. Yeah, so yeah. you're also, <laughs> with all, all of the other members of the bank, you're also participating yeah. in Movember, hence the Most moustache. Most of us, men, of course, uh, do oh. wear a moustache to support the uh, Movember initiative. Yes, okay. indeed. And indeed. are also members of the bank joining? Sorry? Or are, are just men? They're invited to. Okay, yeah, great. Of course. Okay. Uh, we have our second <laughs> guest as well. Welcome, uh, Reinhard Boersma. You're uh, head of... Uh, Customer development at the insurance company International Nationale Nederlanden. Uh, That's quite confusing for people. Yeah, I can't imagine. Um, uh, before we go into watching the expert video, I just want to know how um, have you changed the business within Nationale Nederlanden to uh, uh, adapt to this whole shift to mobile? I'm not sure if your mic is on. But yeah, it does. Right. Yeah. Um, and then international as companies embarking upon a customer-centric journey. So we put the customer first um, before everything else. But before you can do so, we ask ourselves the question, how do we truly understand our customer? Mm -hmm. And are we equipped to truly understand our customer? And to make a long story short, the answer was no. So what we first did and are currently doing is become a customer data driven company. Okay. So that means that all our customer data through all, all our channels, our services, our products 
are made available to give us insights on how to interact with that customer before even going into mobile platforms or into online communities or what have you. So you first wanted to figure out where they are, how they behave. Exactly. Before, okay. And it's going basically um, uh, back into your basic marketing. Who is your customer? Where does he live? What kind of products does he own? How does he interact with you? What was his point of sales? His last point of service? What would he, uh, be his next products? What would be my offering? And how can then I engage in a conversation? And what were the main findings? Um, there's a lot of them. Um, I represent the international part of National and Edelman, mm -hmm. so that means that the maturity levels within our business units in those countries vary uh, uh, greatly, and we have to uh, make them uniform. Um, so in order to, um, to do so, we had uh, to make sure that all the CMOs, all the marketing people start speaking the same language and understand um, how we can put the basics in place first before even going into mobile strategy. Because everybody shouts, I want to have an app you right. know, to bring yeah. some servicing towards customers or have some funky stuff. But you need to have the basics in order first um, uh, before doing so. Um, and that was quite difficult. So the role, and we heard this today, of the CMO is changing, becoming mm -hmm. more technical savvy, right side of the brain, left side of the brain, but also the IT department role is changing. And what we have uh, seen, and this is my, my, my biggest finding, is that basically the new marriage within the company, within NM, is the marriage, marriage between marketing and IT. It used right. to be between marketing and sales, kind yeah. of fighting marriage. It's now between marketing and IT. Is it a good I marriage so far? It's, uh, let's say it is a, a normal marriage with normal, its ups okay. and downs <laughs> and its uh, discussions and who is taking care of the kids today uh, uh, kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a marriage. It is a relationship and it's, um, it's getting profoundly deeper as we move along. Um, this means that IT needs to change its role like being quite a dominant pillar within the company deciding what platforms, what technology, what IT to be to become more a service delivery organization and the marketing organization just demanding requirements all the time for which they get no to the answer, being much more involved, what is um, all the IT uh, functionality making me able to do and how should I engage them in the discussion with IT. So a long story, but to make it very short, the new marriage between marketing IT is, um, is also what we uh, functionally did. So IT and marketing basically are in the same unit right. rolling out these kind of platforms and this technology. Okay. And, uh, Is that the same at Hello Bank? Yeah, more and more. Okay. In Hello Bank, as we are structuring um, small entities, mm -hmm. um, we are more working in, uh, in loops and not in silos. That's indeed, we've got the marketing guys, we've got the, uh, the developers, we've got the analytics guys. So everyone is together uh, in order to build in the same purpose. So yes, indeed, it's uh, a big marriage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before we continue our conversation, uh, we're going to have a look at our expert panel. We've uh, shot some videos, and uh, this expert panel comments on statements and on questions and helps us, uh, well, guide us through the conversations, basically. Let's have a look. Agree. Agree. Disagree. Agree. 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 I fully agree. Um, managing the customer's experience starts with knowing your customer. So if you don't have any data about your customer, you're lost. Agree. You really need to embrace and understand your own data at all the touch points of the customer journey. And even more, you need to engage third-party sources data to enrich that to deliver the full experience. I disagree. Uh, I believe there uh, should be a fundamental right for people to own their own data. So it should be in nobody's hands uh, except for uh, me as a person. I completely agree because as an organization, you got to have your own data to be closer to your own customer. There is no point in relying on external data to maintain your own customer. Reinhard, when uh, you started preparing for the mobile shift, you already had customers and you already had, had customer data, I guess. But for you, mm -hmm. it was Oh, it's, also new, it's a new product, it's a new yeah. uh, brand. So how did you determine um, what kind of customer data that you needed for your marketing efforts? Well, the fact is that um, it's a big question, in fact, of uh, data management. Because one topic which is very important is data protection. And uh, it's a huge topic. Especially in when you're a bank, right? Especially when yeah. you're a bank. Uh, you own the data about transactions, that's for sure. 
uh, what people do uh, as banking transaction uh, that you own. But in fact, it's also important to have uh, data about what you can capture on the environments uh, in order to better answer the needs, the expectations of the, the, the members. Um, so knowing if, it's, uh, if I agree or disagree by um, does the people do own their, um, sorry, do people own their, their, their data? Um, I would say that every people, you know, every business, sorry, you know, to develop needs the data from the from the customer, from the mm -hmm. members, uh, but with the agreement of the uh, of the visitors on the on the various platforms, gathering extra information from uh, other platforms, buying data and so on, uh, can't be done without the agreement previously, the agreement of the uh, of the audience, I think. And how are you, because if, if, if I'm using your bank, can I connect with Facebook and all that? Indeed. And how are you using this customer data for your marketing efforts? We don't use them. Okay. Because I remember that, that it's in... It's just a convenience purpose. Uh, we don't capture the data from the Facebook because we, we don't want uh, our members to, to, to think about capturing the Facebook data, which are very rich, yeah. uh, linked with their, their banking data, which is very confidential. And your own banking data, are you using that for, for marketing uh, purposes? The banking data, yes, of course. And how can you name some examples? Because I remember in the Netherlands, I guess a year ago, there was this big riot about a bank announcing that they would make recommendations based on your financial data. Yeah. And a lot of customers didn't want that. It was uh, this media riot. But you are actually doing uh, this. To, gi to give an example, uh, we capture information about, data about product ownerships, for instance. Mm -hmm. and, um, we personalize the content and the offering based on the uh, on several pages on the website according to the the products the, the visitor already own in the uh, in the bank because it's used as to propose him a consumer loan if he already has one so that that way we use the data of the customer we we also use data you know to improve the platforms uh, so for instance if we see that uh, certain pages are, are not well visited the content is not consumed and so on we we make tests and so on to based on those data to adapt the content to better answer the needs. Okay. Leonard, how do you feel about the privacy argument that one of the speakers gave? Um, we want it to go away, but it's here and it's here to stay and to deal with as a, as a, a, as a topic, so we need to address it. And especially from an insurance point of view, there are different angles to, the, to, to that whole debate. Um, I give you an example within the mobile uh, domain. Let's say you and your girlfriend, your partner, decide to go on a city trip to New York. So you land in New York and you open up your mobile and you get your first message by your telco provider like, welcome to New York, you know, um, calling here costs so much and um, interneting is that much per MB. Let's say your second message is it's coming from uh, Nationale Nederland and it's saying, welcome to New York, uh, you have a travel insurance with us, but please be aware it only has a European coverage. Right. Do you want to extend to a uh, full global coverage? Press here and it's one euro a day. Now, how would you feel toward that kind of service? And if you ask that question to um, different uh, uh, audiences, you will get different uh, answers. Um, within my own group of friends, I get responses like, hey, it's good of them to know, so I, now I'm insured. Towards the other side saying like, who are you to know that I am in New York? Leave me alone, this is my privacy issue. And that's only in terms of servicing and sales. Right. Um, the more profound debate for an insurer with, uh, with data is, um, for example, going into health data. If I know that you have a different health profile, because you have your health apps and you're showing you're a healthy uh, person, you can get lower uh, rates for your insurance because you're a healthy person. But what does that do that to the population which is be, uh, behaving more unhealthy? Right. So what does it do with the subsidiarity principle within insurance? So it is a large debate. I have no clear-cut answers there, um, but it's here. It's here to stay, and we need to deal with it. Okay. I can imagine that you adapt these personalization efforts to the wishes of, of, of your customers. So the group of friends asking for the recommendation when they're in New York, you give them a recommendation, and you can opt out if you don't want to, or something like that. Yeah, and what it tells us to do is that we need to be very specific in um, um, whose data we have and yeah. what do they allow us to do with it. So do I recognize that you like this service particularly and the other person in my database doesn't like this service? Right. And how do I keep track of that? So it's becoming more and more compl uh, complicated, um, but throughout the whole customer journey, you need to keep mapping on um, what service you provide with what kind of data and who likes you to do so and who doesn't.
Okay. And that's complicated. Thank you very much, both of you, for uh, introducing this subject to us. <laughs>